One of the most challenging aspects of building any app is determining the optimal data structure. Ideally, you want to maximize performance while minimizing costs. But that's easier said than done, and especially so with a NoSQL database like Firestore, because you really have to plan ahead on how you model your data. Last week, I asked everybody on our Slack channel to send me the biggest challenges that they faced modeling data in Firestore. And this conversation snowballed into an entire new course on Fireship dedicated completely to NoSQL data modeling and queries. So if this is a topic you're interested in, consider becoming a pro member to get access access to that course. And I'll leave a discount code in the video description. In today's video, we're going to look at five different ways you can structure and query your data that you may not know about. And each technique that we'll look at is based on a real submission from the community. A minute ago, I said that you have to plan ahead when structuring your data. So what do I mean by that exactly? Well, the basic idea is that you want to pre-render your data so that it fits the view or the screen in your app as closely as possible. Ideally, you only need to make one document read or one query to a collection to fill the entire view with data. This differs from a relational SQL database, where the idea is to break your data into a lot of small pieces and then join it all together server-side. Now, I've heard people say that Firestore or NoSQL databases in general are not good for relational data modeling. But that's actually not true, and it's really just a matter of rethinking the way that you model data in general. And what you'll find is that you can solve all the same problems that you can with SQL, but you can do it in a way that's faster, less expensive, and more flexible. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into our first data model and access pattern. This suggestion comes from Samrat, and he wants to query a collection based on whether or not a user was mentioned in a post in that collection. This is similar to something like Twitter, where if you mention a username with the at symbol, it will notify that user that they've been mentioned. And they also might want to see a list of all the tweets that they've been mentioned in. In this case, we have a many-to-many -many relationship where a tweet can have many mentioned users and a user can be mentioned in many tweets. But the thing to keep in mind here is that a tweet or a post can maybe only have one to 10 mentioned users, but a user can be mentioned in potentially billions of tweets. In situations like this, it's usually best to have the document with the smaller side of the relational data manage the relationships. In this example, we have an array of usernames embedded on the tweet or post document. You'd implement this logic somewhere in your front-end code using regex to extract the usernames out of the post text, and then duplicate them on the same document as an array. Now it becomes very easy to query all of the tweets that a user is mentioned in by making a reference to the post collection, and we can use the array contains operator to get all the tweets that have a corresponding user ID in that mentions array. And then we could use a cloud function to listen for a new post to be created, and then send a push notification or an email to your user when they're mentioned. So the main limitation with array contains is that you can only query for one item at a time. And that leads me to the next challenge, which is a category system that allows you to filter by multiple categories at the same time, while also being able to see if a post contains a given category out of potentially multiple past values, and also the ability to filter by not containing a certain value. So these requirements roughly translate into an and, or, or not statement in a SQL database. I'm going to go ahead and call these tags instead of categories, but the general idea here is the same. We have a tags collection, which is really just there to hold any extra data about a tag, like a description or a URL or something like that. And I'd recommend giving your tags a unique ID that's something descriptive that you can actually show in the UI. And then you'll take that ID and associate it to a post by using a map. So we have a map called tags, and then each key in that map is the ID from the tags collection. And the cool thing about Firestore is that it automatically indexes the keys in the map, which means we can query them without any additional configuration. First, let's take a look at how we can do a logical AND query, or in other words, we want to get all of the items that have both of these tags present. We can do this by simply chaining together WHERE statements, and as long as they're using the equal to operator, we can do this as many times as we want. So this works great if you're filtering by multiple Boolean values, but if you throw in a range operator, that means you'll need a composite index. And keep in mind you can only use one range operator per query, so that's a limitation that you'll want to consider. Now if you wanted to make something that was more like an OR query, you can just make multiple queries for separate tags. We're able to run these queries concurrently, and then we can just join them together and filter out any duplicates in our client-side code. Now the most difficult part of this challenge is implementing the NOT logic. The values on the map are set up as booleans, so the most straightforward approach here would be to add all of the tags to every document and then set them to false by default. This would be perfectly fine if you have a finite set of tags and know their values up front, but it would be much more challenging if tags are generated by users and there could be potentially billions of tags. So that's a limitation to consider, but keep in mind that if you have a numeric value or if you have a string value with some sort of ordering embedded in it, 
then you can simulate a not query by using range operators. For example, if we wanted to get all of the items that were not $20, then we could query on either side of that range. Or in other words, all the items that are less than $20 and all the items that are more than $20. And if you're doing a lot of stuff like this, it might be time to look into something like Algolia to index some of your data in a full text search engine. That's what I do for Fireship and Firebase and Algolia work really well together. Now moving on to our next data model, this one comes from Lenny Cunningham and his flightnow.net app. Geolocation queries bring up a really interesting data modeling technique called composite strings. Not only do composite strings allow us to do things like geohashing, but it also allows us to do things like tree traversals and threaded comments. Take a look at this tree structure we have here, where each letter represents a document in the database. What I'm going to show you next is how to write a query that will traverse down one node of the tree. And this is especially useful if you're building something like Reddit comments that can be threaded multiple levels deep, or if you have a hierarchy of categories and only want to query a specific node in that tree. We can do this with all of the documents in the same collection, and you can see here at the top of the tree, we have the document A, and it has a parent value set to false. That would be our top level comment, and then let's say a user responds to this comment, that will be our B document, and it has a parent value set to A. Now let's imagine we have a response to the B document, then we would have a C and D document, and they both reference the same parents of A, B. So what we've done here is create a composite key where the items at the third level of the tree reference the IDs of the parent documents at the first and second levels. These don't need to be in alphabetical order or anything like that, you can just use Firestore's automatically generated IDs. The only thing that's important is that the composite string is created in the same order that the parent elements appear in the tree. Let's take a look at how we can actually traverse this tree. If we just want to grab the top level of the tree, which you would probably want to do if you're showing the top level comments, is just query where the parent equals false. Now, if you want to query across the breadth of the tree or just get all of the top level responses or something like that, you can also save a level property on each document, which would allow you to do so. But I think most use cases will require you to query the depth of the tree, so this part's technically optional. Then assuming you have the level property, which is just an integer that increases by one for each level, you can use where to query where all the documents live at a certain level, or you could use a range operator to get everything above or below a certain level. Now things get a lot more interesting when we query the depth of the tree. The composite key that we set up earlier will get larger and larger as we get deeper in the tree. That means we can take a document ID and use it as a starting point, and then query all of the children that start with that same ID in their composite parent string. We can make this query by saying where the parent is greater than or equal to the ID, and where the parent is less than or equal to the ID plus a high Unicode character. So that would allow us to start from any node in the tree and then traverse downward. And this is actually the same way that geohashing works, and it's a very powerful feature, but is a little more advanced. Now moving on to our next data model, which comes from Stefan, we're going to look at how we can query a collection, starting with an array of document IDs. His data model was a lot more complex, but I just wanted to pick out one little thing that I think is helpful to a lot of people. When working with Firestore, it's ideal to denormalize your data or embed it on a single document, but there are a lot of cases when it's just not practical or possible to do that. So one thing you can do is create a more normalized model, like we see here with a sizes array, then each element in that array is a string referencing a document in a different collection. But because there are no server-side joins in Firestore, how do we actually join this data so we can use it in our UI? We can actually do this very efficiently in Firestore because we can send multiple read requests to the database and Firestore will handle all of those requests concurrently. Here's a little helper function you can use in JavaScript to join an array of IDs to a collection. It takes a collection and an array of IDs as its argument, then it maps the IDs to a document read. That will give us an array of promises, and then we can use promise.all to resolve all of those promises concurrently. And lastly, we can map the document snapshot to its raw data. Now, if we wanted to use this helper method in our code, we can just pass it this collection reference and the array of IDs that we want to read, and it will return an array of the document data. So if you want to model your data in a more normalized SQL style, you can do it using something like this. Now that brings us to the final model coming from Troy, and he's building something like a social media style follower feed. In other words, you follow a bunch of users and you want to see the most recent posts from those users that you follow. This is actually a very challenging requirement, so I built a full demo to show that it's possible in Firestore. As you can see here, I'm logged in as JeffD23, and when I unfollow these users, their posts are removed from my feed. So basically what we're doing here is we're grabbing the most recent posts from these users and then ordering them by date. And on top of that, we're also maintaining the user to user follow relationship. Let's start by taking a look at the data model. The only way to make a system like this scale to a decent amount of users is to duplicate some data. In our database, we have three collections at play. We have one for users, one for posts that can be posted by a user, and then another one for followers. All the relational data will be handled by the followers collection. 
And in fact, all of the data that you see in the UI is coming from a query from this followers document. The followers document belongs to the user who is being followed and keeps track of all of the followers in an array. But in addition to keeping track of the followers, it also duplicates some of the user's recent posts. It doesn't duplicate everything, it only duplicates the data that we need to show in the feed, like the title and then maybe a preview of some of the text. And the last thing we need to do is keep a timestamp of the user's last post. What we're going to do is make a query on this last post property along with the user's array, and the result of that will be all of these duplicated posts from the users that the user is following. Now an important thing to point out here is that we're keeping track of the followers on a single document, so that means we can only scale up to one megabyte of data. And that means you may need to break this up into multiple documents as your app grows. I'm going to go ahead and write this query inside of an async function because we'll need to do some data wrangling after we retrieve the initial data. First we'll make a reference to the followers collection, and then we'll query it using array contains with the username of the logged in user. After that we'll make this a compound query by using order by with the last post timestamp. And keep in mind this is a compound query so it's going to require an index and Firestore will give you a warning about that in the console. Now the cool thing about this is we can limit it to 10 document reads so it's a very efficient read, but it can provide us with data to populate potentially dozens of different posts in the feed. Once we have the result of this query, we have an array that we need to then map to the document data. And then on the document data, we're going to have an array of the user's most recent posts. And that's what we actually want to be showing in the view. So I'm going to reduce this array of documents down to a new array that only contains the recent posts. And then I want to sort those recent posts based on their publish date. We can use array sort to handle that. And at this point, we now have a sorted array of posts that spans across multiple users that this user is following. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If you want to learn more about data modeling and how these particular data models work, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io to get access to the course. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.